I think that McBride has gotten complacent of late. What are you planning? Who, me? What makes you think I'm planning anything? When you're studying the bottom of your glass like that, it means you're bored and looking for something to do to liven up the place a bit. So what is it? Did anyone ever tell you that you have a suspicious nature, my friend? I hear tell there's a big hun build up in Mabu sector. I'll wager that the Major will send up both flights this morning. What are you willing to bet? I knew you'd bite. How about my passing to town? Must be big if you're willing to bet that, but you're on. I know this is terribly short notice, fellows. There's been a change in orders for A flight this morning. I believe that you two are perfectly suited to this errand HQ has in mind. Errand? One of the Kaiser's generals will be inspecting troops on the front line today. I want the two of you to fly into Moberge sector and give him a warm welcome. And how will we recognize this esteemed gentleman? Aim for the staff car. Deering tells me that you've had word of your cousin, Lieutenant. I'm afraid he's had a bit of a setback, Walter. It seems as if he managed to get on the bad side of the commander there. That's not good. What happened? He and a bunch of lads were celebrating graduation, shooting off rockets at old outbuildings near the aerodrome. So make them pay for the damage and send them on their way to the front? They would have, but one of the buildings they shot up turned out to be the commander's privy with him in it. I think that McBride has gotten complacent of late. What are you... Well, I was wrong. Guess I won't be going into town tonight after all. Tough luck, old fellow. But hand over the pass, just the same. You wouldn't mind if I just held on to it until you get back, would you? Afraid I might not make it back, Ned. It's not that. It's okay, Ned. I wouldn't want it blowing out of the cockpit or anything. You keep it warm for me until I get back.
It's getting so that I hate coming out to the hangar. Harry laying into you a lot, old man? You think we started this war just to bugger up his life to hear him talk? Sergeant Major said we'd be getting a new Florida SE 5A for you to bugger up, sir. New SE 5As? You mean these pitiful puffs will finally be laid to rest? Not on your life, chum. The RFC will either keep them here for the replacements, or ship them off to some other unfortunate squadron. Just think, Charles. Three times the horsepower of the pups, and a Lewis gun mounted on the top wing to boot. Should take the wind out of the Hun's new D3s. I hope. I'm going to have a drink. Care to join me, old man? Anything to get out of Harry's sight, eh, Charles? Something like that, chum. See you inside. The editors left me precious little to read, Sergeant Major. Dar said that Mum wants to go back to Wales to visit her family. Mum wouldn't go back to Wales unless things were awful bad in London. You look lower than a private's putties. You're worried about the bombings then? Dar's shop is right off Mount Street in Mayfair. No way to tell how bad they've been hit. The rest got cut out. I've heard tell that the bombing's nothing more than a nuisance, Oliver. I'm sure your family is fine. I just wish I knew for sure. Mail's in, lad. Did the editors leave anything for me to read? It's got a few holes, but your mum seems to be catching on to the rules. Just once I'd like to get a letter that doesn't look like Swiss cheese. Sorry, lad. Restricted information and all that. Reporting as requested, sir. Very good. Your mission was successful? I believe so, yes, sir. Well, I shan't keep you any longer. Carry on. July 10th, 1917. 10-10 hours. Is Halleck still brooding over the London bombings? He looks as grim as a poor bloke on sanitary fatigue duty. I don't think it's the bombings that have the wind up him now, Eddie. It's the riots. Oliver is convinced his sister has been hurt, and the editors have censored it out of his da's letters. You don't suppose that the scholar is thinking about going adrift now, do you? Hard to say what it would take to make a man like that snap. We've got company, gents. To your aeroplanes. Don't forget, you can take up the new SE-5As now. Reporting as requested. You look like you didn't get any sleep last night, Lieutenant. Bloody little, I'm afraid. I spent most of the evening talking with the scholar. I thought you didn't much care for Oliver. Man's worried sick about his folks back home, Walter. I don't know. Somehow that makes him seem a bit more... human. Is Halleck still brooding over the London bombings? He looks as grim as a poor bloke on sanitary fatigue duty. I don't think it's the bombings that have the wind up him now, Eddie. It's the riots. Oliver is convinced his sister has been hurt and the editors have censored it out of his da's letters. You don't suppose that the scholar is thinking about going adrift now, do you? Hard to say what it would take to make a man like that snap. We've got company, gents. To your aeroplanes. Don't forget, you can take up the new SE-5As now.
I thought I was a landowner for sure. Thanks for pulling that hunt off my tail, Lieutenant. I just gave him something else to think about for a minute. You did the rest. Still, I'm not so sure I want breakfast anymore. Oh, it was terrible. Are you alright, mon ami? Of course I'm fine, Lestette. Um, excuse me. I think I'll just go back and see to the rest of my breakfast. Carry on. I was terrified when I saw you up there. You weren't afraid when I took you up a month ago. We. Oui. But then, no one was shooting at us. I should go soon, mon ami. Papa will be worried. If you wish, I could escort you safely home. It is kind of you to offer. But do not trouble yourself, mon ami. I should be safe enough now that you have driven off the Bosch. I should go soon, mon ami. Ah, just the person I wanted to see. Sir? Well, I thought it might come as a surprise. I had put you in for promotion to first lieutenant. And the papers just came through. Good work, lad. Thank you, sir. I won't let you down. No, I don't think you will. Dismissed. August 12th, 1917, 1715 hours. Another mission so soon, mon ami? Yes, we have to be getting ready now. I'm afraid the Major has put a sour cap on the day of set. It is all right, Lieutenant. I could not stay long today in any case. It is more important that you are prepared for your flight. For now, I shall only say adieu. Been listening to the wireless. The casualty rates from Passchendaele are pretty grim. So is our loss ratio, Eddie. I know, and I'm afraid it's only going to get worse. Another mission so soon. All standing orders are off. HQ wants us up immediately in full squadron strength to support our lads at Passchendaele. You're to take a flight up. Look for Hun bombers. Might I point out that we're not at full squadron strength, sir? I have informed HQ of that fact, Lieutenant. You can expect replacements in time for machine gun check. They're sending replacements up for a major battle? Not a one will make it back. I'm no happier about this than you are, Lieutenant. Orders are that all available pilots are to be sent across the line. That includes the replacements. Been listening to the wa-
I say, don't you think that Lisette has been hanging about quite a bit of late? I think those fancy side slips of yours have addled your brains, Oliver. She's sweet on our yank, lucky sod. Ease up a bit, lads. She's a sweet girl. Never said she wasn't, Lieutenant. You needn't be so touchy. What did the old man say about going into town, Lieutenant? Something's put his nose out of joint, Eddie. He says we're all confined to the aerodrome. Son of a Henry, and I had some cushy buckshy all lined up too. Is that how you've been getting those chickens and geese? I'll never tell. Wonder what Charles has done to bugger him off this time. Last time he put orange preserves in the Major's field boots. It's not Bakshi, Edmund. It's stealing. Oh, button up, Oliver. I don't keep them for myself. I certainly don't see you turning it down at dinner. And it's not stealing unless you get caught. Did you make a sizable hole in the Kaiser's war effort today? We hit them hard, that's for sure. It wasn't a pretty sight, Major. As long as the job gets done, son. Yes, sir. Congratulations. You did well today. Dismissed. August 22nd, 1917. 0430 hours. I saw an ace today. He managed to shoot down two of our lads and get away from the squadron. He was flying one of those new foals D3s. From the markings on his plane, it had to be Werner Keitel. You're slipping, Eddie. If I see him... I know. You'll shoot him from the sky. Sorry to call you in at the last minute, Lieutenant. But HQ just rang up with a target for your patrol this morning. The Germans have more observation balloons up in the Douai sector. Any word on the Archies, sir? Afraid not, Lieutenant. Assume that they are being heavily guarded and act accordingly. I thought you were coming to town tonight, mon ami. Did you not want to see me? I was hoping to see you tonight, but the Major has confined everyone to the aerodrome. But why? Were you not successful today? Miss Beauregard, I shall have to ask you to leave. Nothing personal, ma'am. But I would prefer it if they knew they were being punished. And I'm afraid your fine company is anything but punishment. Perhaps another evening. Ah, me. So sad, n'est-ce pas? But such are the fortunes of war. Au revoir. That was bloody uncivil of you, Major. One more word and you're on report, Lieutenant. The issue is closed. Don't you have some work you should be doing, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. If that's an order. It is. Dismissed.
There's someone here to see you. Listen, old man, take my advice. I don't give a cat's whisker about what the Major says or does, but he's on a tear right now, so have a chat with the lovely lady and send her on her way. If the Major finds her here right now, you could find yourself flying a rifle in the trenches. I know that the Major has still forbidden visitors and passes into town. So, I shall not stay long. I have no wish to get you in more trouble with him. I just wish to know if you were all right. I'm fine, of course. It helps a great deal to see someone free of the taint of all this mess. No one is free of taint in this land, mon ami. I wish that our meeting had been under other circumstances. This war can't last forever, Lestat. We have to hold out hope for the future, or this is all for nothing. For some of us, Lieutenant, the war has already lasted forever, and hope is a fragile thread, mon ami. Now I must bid you adieu. You are a brave man. If my country has any hope, it is you. Stay well, my kind American friend. I know that the mas- How was the flight, Lieutenant? Successful, sir. The Sergeant Major tells me you're doing well. Congratulations. September 1st, 1917. 0520 hours. 